So the great thing about these raised garden beds is that I was able to get a garden established really quickly. Basically within one day I went from lawn to a established vegetable patch and that's because I just installed these garden beds and, and brought in a whole bunch of compost um, and they were pretty much ready to go so if I was trying to establish a garden out here just on the ground it would take me a long time to start building layers of really good soil um, the soil here is pure sand there's no nutrition it doesn't hold water and it's very hard to grow things in so it would have taken me a long time to st slowly build a garden out here if I didn't bring in soil and if you're gonna bring in soil you either have to remove soil or build some sort of container to house that soil so that's why I have got raised garden beds and I've, I've got some external soil and these are my annuals so this is food that I'm changing up each season I'm growing new things which is exciting it adds variety to my diet and into my gardening season um, so that is a really great thing about these raised garden beds is that I'm getting a lots of variety and I'm always growing new things the downside of that is that I'm constantly having to plant things. A lot more time and energy goes into these gardens because I am cycling through seasons and harvesting, removing plants, sowing seeds, caring for them, tending to them. Annual vegetables are a lot more high maintenance. You do have to care for them and look after them, make sure no bugs are getting them, make sure you know they you're pruning them pruning the tomatoes and you're harvesting and getting all those fruits and that's why I like to have lots of different systems so there's different energy inputs so this garden might take a little bit more effort um, during the seasons but other areas of my garden are really low maintenance so that affords me the time to put into this okay so in this garden bed I have some tomatoes and I really need to prune them so we're gonna do some quick pruning while we're out here doing the tour and basically what I'm gonna do to these tomato plants is I'm gonna prune off all of the leaves that are below that first set of tomatoes. So to prune the leaves, all I do is just get the branch, push it down and then up and it snaps off nice and clean. We take out these armpit ones and then these branches down here I'm also going to remove, so this branch down here that I've removed, I can now, I'll just clean up the end, I'll cut that off and put that in water and that will regrow as well and I can get a clone from this plant here whilst I tidy up the bottom, I do it the same way, bend it backwards and forwards. So I get this clean area here with no leaves touching the soil that stops bugs being able to climb up, also stops um, bacteria getting on the leaves and we can create a really good airflow through here. All right, so I've taken the bottom leaves off and any of the flowers so that the plant can put energy into growing some roots and it'll grow roots anywhere that the stem is in the water or in soil. I could pop, the, pop these straight in the garden, but it's pretty dry and hot here. So I like to try and get some roots established first um, by just putting them in a jar of water. And then I can basically just get free plants and they grow so much quicker than waiting for seeds. Tomato plants need to be kept really tidy and clean, but that is not how they grow. So they are a little bit high maintenance in the fact that it, you have to get out and prune them and they grow really quickly. So you kind of need to do it like every few days. This is another hollyhock. So in here we've got beetroot. These are more beetroot that I've been harvesting. So these can pretty much all come out soon. Um, we've got some little lettuces in here, more beetroot. This is the pepino. It's got some flowers on it, so this is going to have pepinos soon, which is a perennial, um, so it has a melon flavour, so you can check that out in my perennials video. There's more on that, and it's getting pretty big. I'm going to get some structure for it and tie it up to this uh, pole soon, probably, so it doesn't fall down. Down in here we've got a bean, um, some more beetroots that need to be harvested. I'm harvesting so many beetroots at the moment. Um, we've got some chives down in there, poppies, about to flower, and then this garden bed we've got spinach, chard, calendula, um, pineapple sage, which I always manage to kill, so I'm going to hopefully get pineapple sage 
and more chard, so much chard at the moment. We're eating a lot of that. This is my sacrificial kale, which is working well because the bugs aren't eating anything else. We've got lots of pansies in here, some thyme. Look at those pansies. This one is a tomato that's a volunteer grown from the compost, blends right in. So we've got purple basil here in between the two tomato plants. This is the tomato plant. A little lettuce. Some chives and then a bottle gourd here which I'm going to train up and over. I've planted a few seeds in here so I think maybe a zucchini, can't remember. And we've got the mystery peas from my last video. So we've got some strings for them to climb up. So all the mystery peas are here. Even this little guy. Chives, walking onions, zucchini, another tomato lettuce I have planted in between lots of seeds as well so lots of root vegetables in between sunflower a jalapeno this is a little jalapeno another tomato that needs pruning um, again it's got side shoots off it so I can cut that off and make a whole new plant whilst I'm tidying it up um, some lettuce, a, another chard but that's getting eaten alive so more lettuce, zucchini, lettuce, another beautiful pansy that's still left over from winter, an eggplant. So this eggplant just grew um, from the compost so I've just transplanted it out here and we'll see how we go. I think it's a white well it will be a white one I think from that's what I grow so that's what would have been in the compost um, this is a zinnia another purple basil another zinnia um, more chives this is a basil from last summer that's managed to hang on um, I don't know if it'll do too well it's very old and woody but I'm just letting it in there it's like flowering as well so I don't know we'll see then we've got the citrus trees out the front. They have been absolutely hammered with aphids. So all the new growth has, was attacked by aphids. So they are looking a little bit sad, but there is lots of ladybugs out here. So they'll be fine. This is an apricot. I planted the stone fruits in between last summer and two died. So I need to replace those two, but I'm not going to do it right now. So probably this time last year, or maybe a little bit more into summer, I planted uh, these stone fruit in between my citrus. And it was just so hot. Like over Christmas, we got four or five days over 45 degrees. Um, it's very hot and dry out here. So they, two of them died. So we've got the apricot still going and I need to replace the other two, but I haven't got around to it yet and I'm not going to. Because if I plant it again now, we're gonna end up in the same situation. So I'm gonna wait. Um, till we finish summer to deal with the gaps in here um, but these trees are all dwarf or semi-dwarf so they're not going to get too big um, so I can sort of put something else in between okay so the first citrus that we've got in the row is a lime tree so this is a lime those summer flies yeah then we've got a blood orange, and then we've got a mandarin, and down the end is a lemonade. Alright, so this front garden gets a lot of shade. We're just going to plant a few things in here. So I've got my um, chard, a big hollyhock. Down here we've got spaghetti squash, some chives, more flowers, it's a dahlia. Um, another, another spaghetti squash. That is yellow cherry, like a yellow, like the strawberry guava, but the yellow one. 
Um, down here we've got some more New Zealand spinach which is taking off and then hopefully it will provide an edible ground cover the whole way down here. Zinnias, a pumpkin, more zinnia and a sunflower. So this patch here is on is soil just on a driveway so it's a really compact hard driveway so there's only a um, few inches of soil it's not very deep um, and I can't really dig down into the ground because it's like a compact pretty much concrete so I made this garden bed especially for my pumpkin patch because pumpkin roots don't go really deep down they sort of spread out lengthwise so that's completely fine for me to grow out here there's, it's just unused space so I'm able to have my pumpkins trail off down the driveway um, and it's worked really well so the other thing that I started adding in here is I've added a few more perennials so that this patch is more productive than just pumpkins because pumpkins um, grow through summer and then they're finished so I grew some things here in winter and they seem to do completely fine with the shallow ground and now I'm planting in some perennials so I've got an artichoke I've got some um, New Zealand spinach um, and a few other things we'll take a look um, and they all seem to be growing pretty good so it's sort of a bit of an experiment out here but I'm basically just trying to utilize this unused space and grow food so down here we've got a um, another artichoke plant that I've planted recently. That's a green artichoke compared to the purple one that I have over there. Um, these peas you see shooting up, these are sprouting out of my mulch because this is the pea straw. Um, so there's little random peas sprouting up, but that's all right. Um, peas are nitrogen fixing, which is good for the soil. This is a yarrow, so this is a pink yarrow. We've got a pumpkin over here. This is a New Zealand spinach or warrigal greens, and that is going to be a ground cover. So that's going to also protect the soil and be another layer of mulch, but it is living and I can eat it. So this is pretty hardy. It's actually sort of like, I don't know if you can see, it's sort of got like a succulent leaf. So it's much more drought tolerant than most spinaches. I've planted some flowers. I think those are dahlias. This is a hollyhock. So we've got a really big hollyhock there. Another big hollyhock here. Um, pumpkins. Some chard. So this is cranking, but this won't be going for much longer because it just gets so hot out here and this will not cope with our Perth summers. Um, we've got edible chrysanthemum, so these are a mini chrysanthemum and they just pop up each year. I let them all self-seed. Um, I've taken out all the brassicas here, they're just getting absolutely eaten. And just becoming bug traps, so they're all gone. So I've planted a few seeds in here, I've got some zucchinis in. Um, there's another pumpkin down here, some of these have self-sown. We've got some onion flowers. These onion flowers are bringing all the bees in, which is amazing. Um, and also the onion flowers are edible. You can pop these in a salad. Just pull off, pull off the little um, fl florets and pop them in a salad. All right, so out here the back here, we've got my food forest style garden. It's my favorite one, it's low maintenance. I don't have to do much at all. It, they're pretty established trees now, so all I'm doing is um, pruning them, harvesting, and feeding them. And that frees up more time for me to spend in my other areas of my garden that aren't as low maintenance. Um, I've got different layers of my food forest. So I've got my canopy trees, which are the larger ones here. And then underneath I have some middle layer things, some shrubs, and I have edible ground covers on over the whole um, garden. So there's a whole utilizing all those layers of space um, to grow more food. So right here we have our stra my strawberry guava or cherry guava, and that's got little red berry sized fruit. Um, and it's very hardy, it's easy to grow, and produces a huge amount of food on one plant. Um, it is a guava, so it can be susceptible to your um, fruit fly, 
I haven't had too much troubles with that um, but we'll just see as I get more and more fruit trees I'm going to have to consider that a lot more. The Hawaiian guava which is further down that is also um, susceptible to fruit fly and the Fijoa so I'm just monitoring that at this stage. So then along from the guava next up we have the white mulberry. So the white mulberry um, tastes very different to the red mulberry or the black mulberry. Um, it is sweet like honey. So they go a little bit of a pink tinge when they're ready um, and they're super sweet. They taste like honey. Um, but they are harder to see so I'm trying to harvest them before they hit the ground because they are really hard to see on the ground as well. Um, this tree I grew from a cutting so it was only a little stick when I put it in the ground and since then I've been able to grow heaps more plants from this one tree by taking cuttings and growing from them. So there's other people that have been enjoying my white mulberry trees um, just from a simple stick that I put in the ground which I think is so amazing. Um, so learning to grow from cuttings is such a valuable skill especially when you are trying to establish a bigger garden or a food forest because you can create a whole lot more trees very quickly for no cost at all and then you can either sell them, trade them or just plant them in your garden to have more of that plant in other areas. So because I am in an urban environment I am trying to keep my fruit trees pretty small so I, I am, I am um, cutting this back every year and as you can see like it's pretty big. So that means that I can either use those cuttings to grow more plants or I can mulch it or I can use them as stakes to support other plants in my garden. So it, it has uh, lots of different uses. Um, plus the leaves are edible and you can make tea out of them. Um, use the young leaves as you would spinach. And then down below in between these two trees I have a middle layer which is, is my Queensland arrowroot which is a type of canna. So not all cannas are edible, this is the canna edulis and it has an edible rhizome. And these can be basically used as a substitute for potatoes. Plus they have beautiful leaves, uh, the leaves are edible as well um, but it really looks nice and lush in that middle layer. It has died down over winter so it's just starting to come back to life. I don't have to do anything, it's just going to grow on its own accord. So um, I have broken up some of those rhizomes and put them in other areas of my garden to really give it that tropical look plus have these edible tubers that I can eat. Alright so these ones here, these are the cannas um, and as you can see they've got tropical looking leaves and then the rhizomes are under the ground. There's also a layer down the bottom which is looking a little bit rough at the moment. This is the nasturtium um, and that is dying off now because we're getting hot weather but in replacement of this edible ground cover of the nasturtium I am getting a sweet potato. So I have a sweet potato growing here and that kind of dies down over winter as well and then as the nasturtium dies down it pops up and I don't have to do anything but I get a different edible ground cover growing all on its own so it's a really good combination for me in my garden um, that has that crossover from winter to summer so I've got nasturtium growing in winter and I've got sweet potato growing in summer and they do their own thing I don't have to do anything it's so low maintenance you'll see um, it popping up everywhere because if you have one tiny little bit of root or in, left in the ground it will regrow each year so that is the great thing about sweet potato and you all know that I love the sweet potato it's my one of my favorite edible plants so that is sort of the middle of it this area here that looks very bare at the moment that is under a massive um, tree so this gets a lot of shade so there's things that aren't don't grow very quickly here and not very well so I'm sort of experimenting a lot in this uh, garden here um, and so we've got sweet potato growing up vertically and that's another great thing about sweet potatoes that you can grow it vertically and use up hardly any space so I've just trained the vines up this um, trellis here and I've just harvested a whole bunch of big sweet potatoes under the ground so that grows pretty well in the shade and then also I've got a passion fruit which is just pretty young so it's not that well established yet 
but that's going to go up and cover this as well and then it's going to keep going along and it will get more sunlight as it gets over here so it should um, really be able to thrive and then down the bottom it is looking a little bit ratty from all the nasturtiums dying down but um, there's still plenty of flowers there so there's lots of bees we've got a um, monstera here which I'm trialing it's growing very slowly but we'll see I just grew that from a cutting underneath here you probably can't see it too well but that is sweet violet these lily pad ones here are sweet violet and once this nasturtium dies down that will um, take over and we'll have sweet violets everywhere here so that's another ground cover that um, just does its own thing very pops up here I've got a bottle gourd so I'm going to train this bottle gourd up the fence as well um, we'll see how that goes because we get such intense heat here in Perth it is kind of great to grow in the shade um, this is a pot with the bottom cut off and that is to stop the slaters from eating my young seedling so it's basically like a little barrier um, that protects my seedlings because this garden is full of slaters and then over here we have some random pumpkin seed that I'll probably train that way towards the sun and some marigolds I had left over this is sort of just where I'm chucking in the random stuff that I have left over um, but as you can see there's little sweet potatoes just randomly popping up everywhere I haven't planted these these have just grown by themselves now that I've grown sweet potato here once this one here is a hibiscus so this has um, a really interesting flower it flowers different colors it's a multicolored hibiscus so it has different colors it's another one that's really good for teas and um, bringing in pollinators so this is a blood lime and I've just transplanted that to the spot um, it wasn't very happy in its pot so I'm hoping that the dappled sunlight that it gets here will allow it to thrive so this is another of that edible canna that I was telling you about and um, it's just popping up oh this I'm always finding surprises in here this is a soap wart so that can be used as soap I forgot I had that it's just regrowing so that's great strawberry guava which is very lush and green and it is absolutely loaded with flowers so the strawberry guava, this strawberry guava fruits a few times a year so it has a really big harvest and then it will have a few smaller ones so it, it fruits for a big chunk of the year which is great um, and then obviously we have the mulberry and in between the mulberry and the Hawaiian guava this one here is the Hawaiian guava it's got a bigger leaf on it and it's got a much bigger guava um, in between that we've got so our middle layer we've got some fennel and we've got bronze fennel we also have um, all our edible ground covers so some of our edible ground covers we've got uh, strawberries we've got this is a, a false cardamom or a cardamom ginger so this has got like a really fragrant tropical flavor that's good for flavoring teas or you know rice or curries and things like that uh, what else have we got uh, a calendula it's all in here more nasturtiums um, some onions popping up there's probably all sorts of other things in here that just pop up because I let this garden really go wild and self seed so I don't do anything um, this is the guava so it's got a bigger leaf on it hasn't started flowering yet that I can see um, but is also starting to get pretty tall and then down in here we have this is the elderflower so you can see some of them up the top there this I grew from a cutting and it has gone wild very quickly I think this is actually a noxious weed in many places because of how quick it grows um, which I wasn't planning on so my poor banana is down here getting overtaken um, so I don't know that may not stay here so underneath that we have again some more strawberries and we've got some strawberry flowers on there 
um, we've got some chicory which has beautiful flowers more of the cardamom leaf that I've just repopulated um, some dianthus flowers so I just break things up and keep repopulating all through here this is a curry plant the feijoa which is absolutely loaded uh, with flowers and fruit in between my two feijoas so there's one there and the other one we have lavender which has been flowering at the same time as my feijoas so it's been helping pollinate that and now they're both sort of finishing at the same time my lemon tree which I gave a big prune so it has got some fruit on it but it is more manageable size it was getting way too big and then down here in this gap I have put some more of the Queensland arrowroot here and um, this is my kumquat that I transplanted from a pot to this new spot and the kumquat is doing really well look how much new growth is on there it's much happier in this spot and it's got plenty of room now to grow so it can be a big bush sort of like the size of that one and then down we've got another hollyhock we've got the rosemary which used to be here a massive rosemary but I have um, now got it growing here right on the edge in the corner because um, that's more a better use of space So we've got this big chard and this one we've got some more basil down here these are the society garlic so this is a chili plant that i overwintered so i chopped it back over winter and it has now sent off heaps of flowers and new growth and chilies so we like that this is my little seed station at the moment a shade cloth to protect it from the sun and inside lots of little tomato plants this is a golgi berry in this container some of my cuttings my finger lime that still hasn't had anything finger limes one looked promising but it seemed to disappear so i don't know where it went got some hollyhocks This is my tea garden, so we've got different types of mint. We've got chocolate mint, a variegated apple mint. Um, that one over the back is grapefruit mint, and this is lemon verbena. So this is just all tea and cocktail stuff in here. Plus the lemon balm is right here. I just planted a little cucumber, again with the Slater barrier. the asparagus look at this beautiful bronze fennel I love the color on this 